police keeping pro-Palestinian activists far away from President Joe Biden. Tense moments and police in full riot gear move in. Their anger, frustration, and disappointment on full display. It ends without confrontation and without seeing the president. They say if Biden could see this, he would know he's lost their vote over his handling of the war on Gaza. Wow, very telling. Hey, this is Chris Hyland. Welcome back to Courageous Media. Thanks so much for joining us. We got a short video today diving into some information that has surfaced about what's happening in the Muslim and Arab populations in the battleground states, specifically the Blue Wall, Minnesota, Michigan, and how the handling of Gaza and also Joe Biden's ultra-woke policies could seriously affect the 2024 election. Let's dive right in. Please like, subscribe, share, let us know how we're doing. To see what this movement has been able to do in terms of mobilizing people across the state, to get behind a simple action of pulling a Democratic ballot and voting uncommitted to send a resounding message to Biden and his administration that the decisions they're making, uh, where they're both aiding and abetting in the ongoing genocide in Gaza, is a decision that sits in direct opposition with how his constituents are feeling. Welcome back to Battleground. Michigan has been a bellwether the last two presidential elections. In 2016, Donald Trump's close victory there helped propel him to the White House. While in 2020, a win in Michigan for Joe Biden was critical to his electoral college victory. But this year, a new dynamic is in play that could tilt this crucial swing state one way or the other. Namely, the uproar over the conflict in Gaza and how it's impacting the Arab American vote. Michigan is home to more than 200,000 Arab Americans, by far the most of any of our swing states. And how that vote shakes out in November could be the difference. For more on this, we turn to Caitlin Buss from the Detroit News. Um, Caitlin, I think we should start by making a distinction between Arab American voters who are feeling this issue deeply and personally and Democrats who are insisting they'll stay home in November as a form of protest against Biden's policies. Um, are these two groups the same? No, they're certainly not. Uh, you know, not only is Joe Biden uh, losing support, I mean, drastic support from Arab Americans in Michigan, but he's also losing support from those who sympathize with the pro-Palestinian, pro-Gaza position. Um, this tends to be younger voters with whom he is performing worse than he did in 2020 already. They care about other issues. They're not impressed with how Biden has handled um, this particular conflict. They interestingly say it might not change their vote, but they're already deciding not to vote for Biden. So he's got two different dynamics here, and he's losing support with Jewish voters, of which we have a huge population in Michigan, too. Sure. Um, well, and you've talked to so many Arab American voters in Michigan. What are they saying about Biden's policy and the war in Gaza and how it's going to impact how they vote? Sure. They are done. I mean, they have moved on from Biden. We saw that very clearly in the February primary in Michigan, where more than 100,000 Arab American voters uh, voted uncommitted. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going toward Trump, but they are absolutely mm -hmm. frustrated with Biden. Uh, Ninety-five percent of Muslim American voters don't support Biden at this point, having voted uncommitted, uh, at least in Michigan. It, it's, yeah. it's essentially That is monumentally huge. Joe Biden is losing the Arab American vote big time. And that is a major, major factor in two big states. You saw their, their graph of battleground states, 211,000 in Michigan. But there's also estimates, because it's estimated, they don't know exactly how many, but somewhere between 70 and 130,000 in Minnesota. Well, they didn't include Minnesota as a battleground state because it's been solidly blue for forever. But in the new electoral map, Donald Trump has put Virginia and Minnesota solidly in play in this election. And he's close to putting other places in play too, like New Jersey. We'll go there a different day. But two states with heavy Arab American and Muslim populations in Minnesota and Michigan are, uh, one's an absolute battleground and one is absolutely in play in this new electoral voter concept and with the new coalition that Trump is building. And the fact that Arab Americans are abandoning Biden is absolutely massive. Actually, I mean, if you're staying home, it, 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 you could see it as a vote for Donald Trump. And his support of Israel is very well established. Um, has he tried to appeal to Arab American voters in Michigan? Can he? What does that look like? 
Yeah, he, he the Trump campaign has, and they're making some headway with people uh, in Michigan. Uh, he has a strong ally in uh, Tiffany Trump's father-in-law, who happens to be, you know, a, a, the head of a multi-billion-dollar conglomerate here that works in the auto industry. Mm. Um, he's doing a lot of work for Trump. They've made Arab Americans for Trump uh, as a group. Trump did meet with that community in May. I don't think it ultimately went all that well. You'd mentioned it earlier. We're still over four months from the election, but if there is some kind of ceasefire or a peace agreement between now and then, could that move these Democratic and Arab American voters back to Biden, do you think? I think it could have uh, some impact. I think a lot of those voters might be gone for good. And, you know, a lot of them have relatives. Um, they have family members who've been killed in the conflict. So they're they're very frustrated. It's hard to exaggerate, you know, what a loss this is for Biden. Uh, the Biden campaign tried to come meet with them earlier in the spring. Um, they said no. So I don't know that they're coming back. Caitlin Buss with the Detroit News. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Absolutely huge. Couple salient facts that you got to get from that. First, I think the biggest one is that Trump met with the Arab American population in uh, representatives of it in Michigan. She said it didn't go particularly well, but he met with them versus Joe Biden, who they refused to meet with. They wouldn't even talk to him. They are gone from the Democrat Party. They are gone from at least Biden's Democrat Party. Now, there are two things affecting the Arab American population, especially those that are Muslim, and what they talked about was this overall younger sort of pro-Palestinian Democrat vote. So you've got Joe Biden, because of his support of Israel in the Hamas war, is losing both of those groups, is what they say. Now, he's definitely losing the young pro-Palestinian crowd because of his support for Israel in the Gaza war. Trump's not going to do much to win those on that particular issue, but he can certainly win them on immigration and the economy and other things. But the Arab American population, which again, makes up 200,000 people in Michigan and almost 100,000 people in Minnesota, there are two issues affecting them. They are certainly unhappy with Biden's support of Israel in the Gaza war, in this war. Now, they're not going to be much happier with President Trump because he's got a similar stance. Now, President Trump has called for ending the whole thing, for cutting off funding to Iran, which funds Hamas, which could seriously shorten this whole conflict and lead to a much faster settlement or ceasefire. But the other big issue that they, that they didn't talk about was in the Arab American population, especially the Muslim American population, woke politics are not welcome. The LGBTQ alphabet mafia is not welcome. You should see, have you seen the videos of Arab Americans in school board meetings, not just protesting, but screaming, ranting, raving about their children being taught sexual identity, sexual politics, uh, sex education. They don't want it. They are even more fundamental in that particular view than even, than even devout Christians, although they are extremely close. I just think they're more outspoken. But that is absolutely a huge issue for Arab Muslim Americans. They can't stand Biden's woke politics. So he's got two things working against him. And as she said, they're already gone. They won't even meet with him. So you've got a margin of victory in Michigan that was 150,000 votes. And if you've lost 200,000 Arab Americans, even if they don't vote for Trump, if they just don't vote, that flips the state right now. Need, let alone the economic issues, the illegal immigration issues, because Trump is polling 10 points higher almost everywhere than he was in 2020. This could be a monumental tectonic shift. Please let me know what, we, what you're thinking. How do you see this playing out with the Arab Muslim population and Democrat politics, both on the woke side and on the Israel Gaza side? We'd love to hear from you. Please like, subscribe, share. Let us know how we're doing in the comments. Please leave a comment and share this with everybody that you know so we can bust out of this YouTube algorithm and get rolling and expand our audience because we've got a republic to save. And we've got a bunch of things we got to do, Courageous Army. Donate, volunteer, fight, and we got to drag 10 people and go vote. We can do this because God is good and he is sovereign, man. Hey, it'll all be good in the end. It's not yet good. It's not yet the end. Until I catch you next time.